Good evening, doctors, and welcome to the third Quiron Salud Masterclass. Today we have the pleasure to introduce you Dr. Ramon Cugat. He's the medical director of the Cugat Institute, medical council president of the Catalan Football Health Services, affiliate of the Royal Spanish Football Federation, and the president of the Garcia Cugat Foundation. He has operated on thousands of players from all categories, among those some well-known professional names. He is recognized for using new surgical techniques and diverse biological treatments. In recognition of his work, he is repeatedly invited to give lectures and presentations in international and national medical congresses. In addition to further validate his work, he has been published in numerous scientific journals. Three quick instructions for you, doctors, for today. The questions to Dr. Cugat can be typed in the questions and answer box. Some questions will be answered by the doctor at the end of the session, and the certificate of attendance can be collected at the end of the session. Please, Dr. Cugat, you can proceed to present okay. the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you for this kind introduction. First of all, good afternoon, everybody are in Emirates. And we are coming here in Quiron, Barcelona. And we talk biology. Why bio biology? Because normally the orthopedics pay attention uh, in the uh, fractures, reconstruct the anatomy, uh, then reconstruct the function as the ankle, the hip, and the knee, etc., etc. But we omit one very, very important concept we need to think in biology because the fracture is healing by the uh, clue, uh, just a staple, uh, plates. No, it's healing by biology. That is the idea we start 19 years ago to work. And here you can see a lot of uh, people, doctors, but in the right hand you can see uh, the uh, veterinaries, why these universities in Spain are cooperated with us? Because, as uh, Mr. Segui said, we have a foundation and we are working together with these uh, people from this university in Spain. And then here we have not only orthopedics, sports medicine, uh, people on research, uh, nursing and rehabilitation, we are focusing in sports medicine and sports traumatology. And that is the idea. Uh, I am not coming alone here in, uh, in Barcelona now today and I moved to Dubai nowadays in this moment because I am coming with everybody you can see here and maybe, maybe we have some other. I'm sorry, I removed. I think will be more uh, speak more clear. My disclosure, I don't have any problem. And perhaps the goal of leading treatment, we need to restore the anatomy, recover the function and regeneration through biology. And we can we can use these two ways, surgical treatment and non surgical treatment. The goal of regeneration is we need to think in a scaffold, we need to think in cells and signaling molecules. The bases are signaling cells, the cells, and this three-dimensional matrix scaffold. That is a wound healing process, I think everybody knows, but there are two different kinds of growth factors. One modulate cell proliferation, migration, and synthesis of extracellular matrix. Transform and growth factors, beta-1, PDGF, and insulin growth factor like one. And another group, vascular endothelial growth factors, hepatic growth factors, and basic fibroblastic growth factors. There are chemotactics, mitogenic, and endothelial cells promoting angiogenesis, this group. There are two different groups of growth factors. And the growth factors uh, mode uh, of active definition is a tyrosine kinase receptor 
the mechanism of action. Growth factors are solar proteins, cytokines. They are a type of biological mediator which regulate key events in tissue repair. It has been noticed that all of types of connective tissue, bone, muscle, cartilage, synovial, synovial membrane, tendon, ligaments, meniscus, skin, so-so, contain mainly of these signaling proteins, which play a very important role in the remodeling and repair of the different types of connective tissue. The mechanism of action of the growth factors. Physiology function of the platelets, which are hemostasia, and deliver proteins to areas where tissue is damaged. The aim is to use platelets as a vehicle to deliver growth factors to the injury site, mimicking the physiology process of tissue repair. We need to remember, because PRP is a generic name, we are using PRGF endoret. Why? What's the difference? We put the name and surname. Because, as I said, PRP is generic. That is the reason there are many papers, one in favor, the other contra. Why? Because we don't use the same product. I can say, please, take a fruit. But I need to ask, which kind of fruit? Apple, orange, banana, grapes, it's completely different. Or in front of one infection. You can take antibiotic, but which kind antibiotic? We need to see what's the best sensitivity to the bacteria we need to attack. That is the same. PRGF, the characteristics are platelets and plasma, without leukocytes and without red cells. It just increased to 2.5 times the number of the baseline platelets and activated only with calcium chloride. And here on the right, you can see five formulas to see how is when we spinning, then when it's uh, activated using the uh, soft is a coagulation, is a uh, fibrin, and then the supernatan. And the supernatan is one of the more rich uh, liquid with the growth factors. And that is, uh, you can see the protocol, the standardization. The people need to stay uh, at, at least four hours without eat anything, especially fat, sugars. And then we remove uh, the blood and then spinning and uh, divided, activated, and is ready to go to inject in muscle, tendons, joints, so so. Uh, sometimes in the bone fractures, fractures, that was one boy, 15 years old, football player, and was deviation and was not possible to heal, very rare, 15 years, and just one injection was healed. And the muscle, muscle injuries, so common in the football players, we have about 25,000 injuries per year in our football federation here in Catalonia. And muscle, maybe we have three, four thousand players with muscle. The most common is hamstrings, then is uh, rectus femoris and the quadriceps, and then is uh, the soleus and the geminus, and then the adductor pubis, pubis. And here you can see, and 10 days PRP leukocytes free, okay, as I explained before. And then 20 days, you can see the difference we can demonstrate here by the echographist. Our echographist is Dr. Marta Reus. She's a specialist in echography. She's only work in the soccer players and uh, echography. Tendon, muscles. In the ligaments, normally everybody knows lateral ligament, collateral is a cordonal ligament and when it rupture 
uh, needs to do surgery. And here, when it's a partial tear, you can see it's possible to heal the um, lateral collateral ligament in the knee. It's not necessary to do surgery. <coughs> the tendon injuries. You can see at the first 8 November 2010. And here, the last one, how is the evolution? But curiously, the tendinopathy is partial to heal all with growth factors. Only, only the big problem is when this uh, tendon has a calcification. When there is a calcification, sometimes it's good the growth factors, but sometimes need to uh, remove by this, uh, in the surgery room. Mm, and here I can say, first of all, disappear the pain. And later we can see how is healing the tendon. Because several months after uh, remove the pain, we can see the area of the lesion, but it's not pain because it's in process of healing. <clears throat> the other is the PRP injections in the chondral lesions. Here you can see that on the right is a professional soccer player. We perform arthroscopy to clean and then we perform uh, the uh, uh, microfractures. And you can see eight, seven months later, how is the second look and the same injury of the knee. Here, if you are interested, you can see the uh, papers we have published about all these growth factors. And <clears throat> the other is the subchondral bone. Why the subchondral bone? Because nowadays we need to think in the crosstalk mm, we have between the subchondral bone and the cartilage and the synovial. Because uh, we said, oh, this injury of the cartilage uh, will be later in a osteoarthritis. Yes, but please, what happened here? We don't know exactly. But sometimes the problem is the subchondral bone. Because sometimes without any trauma, any trauma, we can go to the uh, osteoarthritis. But the most common is when we have uh, traumatism, uh, overweight, uh, then has been operated in by uh, meniscectomy, anterior or posterior crucial ligaments, etc., etc. And then the other is the how is the uh, genetic? Genetic is another. There are several uh, problems in this patient. And here, the idea is to inject, as you can see on the left, inject inside the patella the growth factors. We inject in the hip, as you can see here in the hip uh, joint, in the, in the head, and then in the uh, cavity of uh, the acetabulum. And then in the knee, we can inject in the medial, uh, femoral condyle, lateral, uh, and then not only in medial lateral, maybe in the patella, as I said, in the tibia too, and is uh, one treatment is doing very very good. Needs to do in a, in the surgery room because it's painful, and need to do just a sedation, and then this uh, intrabone uh, injection with this small motor with a drill, this very thin needle, and. Uh, maybe two hours, three hours later, can go home. We talk about regenerative medicine basis as a scaffold cells and signaling molecules. And here we'll go to talk. The technique is more complex and always surgery. The BMC, bone marrow concentrate, and then adipose uh, cells that the stroma vascular fraction we use for uh, anterior crucial ligament surgery and meniscal surgery. <clears throat> the stem cell definition advances of its use. Stem cells are undifferentiated or partially differentiated cells 
that can differentiate into various types of cells and proliferate and definitely to produce more of the same stem cells. They are the earliest type of the, of the cells cell lineage. Easy isolation, high differentiation capabilities, strong colony expansion without differentiation lost, immune suppression following transplantation, powerful anti-inflammatory uh, properties, and the ability to localize to damage tissue. Remember, we talk about the PRP. That's the same when we talk about cells. Which kind of cells is the best? We don't know. We can say here adipose and bone marrow. The same name, but different composition. Adipose, enzymatic digestion or not. IDRCS, non-enzymatic digestion. It's mechanics. And then bone marrow concentrate, open or close obtention system. The cells, bone marrow concentration. <clears throat> you can see we remove from the iliac, posterior part of the iliac, and then uh, we have treated uh, from 13 to 18, these five years, 278. Knees, the majority, 157, hip, 95, ankle, 23, and bone, osteonecrotic, 3. And the chondral defects treated with concentrate of bone marrow, derivatives themselves, non-expanded, because in Spain it's forbidden, it's not possible. And here you have seen the product. The product, you can see the bone marrow and then the bone marrow concentration is you can see the difference when we concentrate the results as the knee and hip results of a pass at three months that's improving movement improvement recovery faster imaging no significance change adverse effects non methodology one step surgery and reproduction, cell concentrate, no significant difference between the bone marrow and the concentration. Poor results in patients with malalignment, because that is not a biological problem, that is a mechanical problem. Maybe first of all, need to do high tibial osteotomy or distal, depends on its varus or valgus, uh, the, the femur. And then the other, tensiomyography. Physiology fibers concentration time is shorter and easier recovery. That is so easy when we use uh, the professional soccer player to avoid injuries and the hamstrings and the quadriceps, etc. etc. Now, adipose, the stroma vascular fraction and anterior cruciate ligament. This 2060, 80 in total. Meniscal surgery was not finished, not yet. The adipose, we can see, removed by the technician, not by us, because we need specialists in uh, plastic surgeons. That was a study. What happened when finished the anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction, when we inject one uh, injection of this uh, material inside the knee joint? The objective is to assess safety and feasibility of injecting adipose derivate regeneration cells into the graft tissue during the anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction surgery. And here you can see the multiples of mechanism actions. The new blood vessel formation, wound remodeling, paracrine signal, immune modulation and prevention of the dead cells. Here you can see all the process at the soccer player is on the table, we remove and we can get first clean the fat and final ad uh, addition of the enzyme and then collect the uh, shearing with uh, cells
And finally, we inject inside the graph a little drops, not so much, and the rest around of the graph. And then on the right, you can see uh, the element uh, is a counter for to see the viability of the cells. And then uh, that is the demographic. Uh, we have all soccer players, uh, 20. Uh, we uh, lost one because 10 months after the surgery, go back to play and has a distortion and re-rupture this ligament. The age you can see is 24 medium and bone marrow index uh, and the fat, viability cells, uh, you can see the dose we inject, etc, etc. And here maybe is much better one picture than 1000 words. And you can see what happened this anterior cell ligament at two months post surgery uh, by a study of MRI. Four months, six months and 12 months. You can see how is increasing the ligamentization of this uh, ligament. But sometimes you can see histological is not the same collagen is a little fibrotic collagen. And that is another case you can see at uh, November 13, January 14 and March uh, 14. The idea is healing quicker. That is another case in sagittal view. Okay. And August 13, November 13 and January 14. And that is another, you can see, is so common this picture when we use growth factors. And we can say, uh, has been studied by Dr. Roberto Sejas in his doctoral thesis, and we can see at four months are significantly different between the group with the growth factors and the group without growth factors. But curiously, at 12 months is practically the same. But why? Because the growth factors accelerate healing. That is the reason at 12 months, the growth factors finish several months to work. And the body continues, continues when we don't have growth factors. And then we continue. Try to use one scaffold from growth factors and the mean set pieces of cartilage, that is autologous cells, but not stem. And we need to go to the surgery room, that is a complex, a little more complex surgery, but the better, better, better results. That is useful when we have chondral defects. In chondral defects surgery, and why? Because everybody knows when we are uh, inject the autologous liquid to gel dynamic scaffold as a carrier of biological mediator in tissue repair. What happened? First of all, there are degranulation of the platelets. And these uh, granules, someone is going directly to receptor of the membrane. And the other is attack, is attach in the fibrin glue and later is leave delivery and the action is the same. One is more directly and then indirectly. That is the, uh, the pot uh, phenomenon because finally they create the biosynthesis uh, and the molecules uh, to the cells activate this. That's one uh, pilot study in a ship model in uh, Cordoba University in the faculty of veterinary and on your left we can see the defect we create 8 millimeters in the medial femoral condyle and you can see the uh, tension of collagen 2 all is collagen 2 no collagen 1 no collagen 3 and that is the chondogenesis and regenerate cartilage with collagen type 2 at six months with nearly the normal macroscopic ICRS assessment. 
uh, you can see the pictures is first the sacrifice the sheep at one month the second is at three months and the third at six months that is the reason and has been studied optical microscopic electronic microscopy and this was equivalent of the structure to mature cartilage this treatment is an easy effective safe reproducible and cheap alternative option to treat chondral injuries with this we need to say thank you to our little sheep. that is one soccer player what happened from 2015 till now we operated 159 the majority of soccer players and we can see the lateral femoral condyle is a fracture of the cartilage is a big part of uh, the condyle degree four and we go to the surgery room in acute case and remove the pieces of cartilage and this cartilage we keep it as similar we have a goal why because then we mix the fibrin glue from the growth factors and mix with the pieces means that pieces of cartilage and you can see now then by arthrotomy no by arthroscopy because is uh, in conjunction with the serum is cleaning and we lost a lot of growth factors here in the video you can see the mesh with the minced pieces of growth factors fill it and then you can see some drops of activated growth factors you can see at the top the bottom uh, the uh, chondral uh, injury in the trochlea in the in the second uh, or in the fourth picture then that is possible to use in the patella yes in the trochlea yes as you can see in the condyle yes in the medial in the lateral doesn't matter and in the talus osteochondritis dissecans here you can see we implant this mesh and we try to show you how is the movement flexion extension of the ankle and the mesh is attached but why is attached the mesh because there are about 12 proteins are adhesive proteins and that is the reason and we don't use any mesh to cover over that's another professional soccer player the first 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 division top and you can see on the left the fracture of the patella was a dislocation then entrance at the same time and in the middle how we can restore we clean and the pieces of the cartilage we get it and mix with the fibrin glue on the right when is implanted stick it and then we use some drops of growth factors and the MRI you can see at seven months but at seven months we have at three months is quite similar at seven months why because heal quicker you can see how it's possible to restore the cartilage in these cases with this technique sometimes we have more complex meniscal transplantation uh, um, anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction the second time and then the uh, the cartilage injury we can do at the same time the three surgeries because that is one professional soccer player the patient has been evaluated the first 15 cases by Dr. Alentor and minimum 10 month follow-up an excellent and good results over 70 15 cases 15 in Mokar is 9 regular is 50 70 for imaging and poor under 51 case 
Here you can see what happened when in acute micro fractures and inject one injection only the growth factors in the left. That's a professional soccer player. That is not a professional, it's a young. Nowadays it's a professional. And was an osteonecrotic, 16 years old, and we cover with this cartilage. And nowadays, five years later, he is playing. But now he's 20 and he is a professional soccer player. You can see in this case the second look what happened. One is with the microfracture plus intraarticular PRP. In the other second look is autologous PRP matrix and plus cartilage chips. And the, what's the summary? When we have this kind of injury of cartilage, we have two ways. One is two-step surgery, the most common in the world. Isolated cells sent to the lab. Cell sculpture expanded. And the second step, surgery for implantation, and we using a mesh, artificial mesh. And the other for us is just one step. Open, mini orthotomy, as you can see, and adapt the uh, mesh in the medial condyle, lateral condyle, tibial plateau, and the trochlea in the uh, patella, or as you can see in the talus in the ankle. And just, I suppose, take home message. But the most important, have you seen, is the images, because I think it's most important, one picture than 1,000 words. The signaling molecules, the proteins, obtention, application, easy, time-saving, results satisfactory, and muscle skeletal system injuries. Cells, the obtention, application complex, always surgical. Results similar, but longer than signaling molecules. Proteins obtained in, the surgi in surgical ACL, uh, tirocosal ligament, meniscus, condyle defects, bone fractures, complication, treatments. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Three-dimensional matrix, scaffold, signaling molecules, proteins, and non-stem cells, the chondrocytes. Obtention, application complex, always surgical, and the results better than signaling molecules, proteins, and cells, bone marrow concentrate, in condyl defects surgery. But don't forget, not only this kind of treatments, we need to think in 3D, bioprinting, or other cells, muse, cells, other blood bases, therapies, and genetics, because biology is in continuous evolution, and biology is not the present, is the future. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Good afternoon. And if you have some questions, I am ready to answer if I can. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, doctor, for such an interesting presentation. We have some questions for you. First of all, what is better to use, cells or PRP? Depends. Uh, we need to study uh, in which kind of injury. <clears throat> for example, if you have an injury of the patella tendonitis, I think is more expensive the cells needs to go to the surgery room and anesthesia. If we inject only growth factors, we can heal and is uh, more economic and maybe in half hour is ready to remove the blood, spinning and then inject under echographic control. Needs to be very, very accuracy and these injections needs to do under echographic control. Perfect. Second one, PRP can always be used. That is, do they have no contraindications? No contraindications. I have only when there is any arthritis, uh, acute, uh, I never use. I don't know, but I, I never use. Then there is another contraindication in some book, in some paper. You can see 
is when there is a, um, the platelets are uh, is a leukopenia. They are a poor platelets. But I think we can use because the growth factors, there are two sources we can see, not only from the platelets, the plasma, and sometimes we can get growth factors from the plasma and they can work too. The third one, how long will it take for a footballer with a muscle injury treated with PRP to play, uh, to play again? Normally, if the injury is for eight weeks, maybe in six weeks, come back to play very well. Sometimes in one injection, that's enough. Or sometimes two, maximum three in the muscle. And the muscle needs to take care. We need to use the poor fraction. Never start with the rich. Why? Because in the rich, we have a lot of platelets, as we said. And then we have a lot of TG beta 1. And TG, TG beta 1 is a fibrotic Tissue is a very, very anabolic growth factor, and we need to take, take care with this protein. I think in a professional or amateur soccer player, it's better to start under choreographic control, inject, and not only inside the injury, around the injury. Why around? Because around we have the cells and the fibers are healthy. Inside is destroyed, and there is a lot of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines and in, uh, interleukins and it's better to work and uh, try to act to, uh, the action over the dormant cells, the satellite cells. And then at the second, in the one week later, we can see another echography and we can uh, expect uh, how is the evolution. If the, our uh, echographist, Dr. Marta Rius, he said, this uh, healing is later, is slowly. Then we inject another, but we put a percentage adequate at the uh, evolution of the injury. But I propose to start with a poor, poor. And rich for us is just 2.5, 2 uh, uh, increase the number of the platelets over our baseline. Perfect. And the last one, to a patient suffering for, from osteoarthritis, would PRP mesh with autologous cartilage also be recommended? Uh, normally a mix, maybe 50% is possible in osteoarthritis inside the knee and inside the uh, bone, intra-bone. But that is necessary, the majority we are using here in our office, but um, because it's not a big, but when there is an osteonecrotic or a big injury, then we go to the surgery room, we need to clean, or if uh, inside we don't have any other problem, no loose bodies, etc., uh, we inject inside the bone because nowadays, as I said, inside the bone is uh, subchondral bone is one we need to pay attention because is uh, the the match is playing more in the subchondral bone I think than the cartilage. The cartilage suffer. Why? Because when the subchondral bone is suffer one uh, big pressure the loading is too much, or some other injury, what happened? Increase the, the vessels, increase the vascularization. In this vascularization goes from the subchondral bone to the plate calcificate on the uh, subchondral and then pass uh, the cartilage and broken splits the cartilage. And then here start the deterioration of the cartilage too needs to pay attention and we need to study more biology nowadays because in biology, I repeat it, is the future. Dr. Ramon Cugat, thank you, thank you very much for such an interesting presentation. Thank Thanks. And the next Kiron thank Salud you. Masterclass is going to be presented next Wednesday, November 25th, by Dr. Mikkel Sanz, <coughs> Director of the Digestive Diseases Department in Tegnon Medical Center. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.